Secret Invasion Season 1 Episode 3 Thoughts. This episode is called Betrayed. So spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. Another episode I absolutely loved. Not a fan of Gaia getting fridged there at the end of the episode, but other than that, I really loved the episode. And yeah, so we start with the yeah, so the the um, Gravik is talking to the the council members about yeah, in his words, turning you know we're going to turn ourselves into what was it unique WMDs super scrolls. So we have a name drop and. They're, they're, you know, the extinction of the human race. So, And we get flashback to 1998 New York, and I like the, the flirting and the line between, you know, what does she look like? Depends on which, on, you know, the day of the week, That's which is like, you know, because, you know, if, if someone, like, at this point he doesn't know he's talking to a scrawl much less, you know, Vara, but, yeah, you know, if, if you know, it's an in-joke, he's, he's making a joke to, that only he will understand, but it also, you know, it sounds, oh, you know, she likes altering her look, that's a, you know, a lot of women like altering their look as time passes, so, yeah, and, yeah, you know, he's, he's like about to quote the rule book, which I gotta say, did not see that yeah, Fury has changed a lot over the years. Did not think Fury, Nick Fury, in the MCU would ever be quoting Vools at at someone as like, you know, we can't do that. That's against the manual. But yeah, you know, time change, time, and experience really changes someone. And yeah, you know, they start a relationship. You know, our our unit doesn't exist. I'm not actually working for you, so there's no conflict there, you know, and, and, yeah, that was an, that was a fun way of, and, yeah, we get, uh, um, we, yeah, we go back to the, the present, and, I mean, Christopher McDonald, I'm gonna find his, his character name real, real quick, uh, right, here it is. Christopher McDonald, play, Chris Stearns, wow, yeah, it's an, he, he's a news host on the FXN network, that's a, that's, yeah, I mean, yeah, why, why be subtle, I think at, at this point, the, the conflict between the left and the right is is beyond subtlety. So yeah, FXN. That's a that's pretty clear what actual note and and yeah, like he's he's got a real Tucker Carlson thing going. You know, the the I'll never tire of saying it, former Fox News host that got a disturbing amount of viewers considering that he like he wasn't even. He literally went on the air and said that the, the he's he doesn't find M and M's sexy enough anymore. Like just, yeah. But but yeah, you know he's like in in the you know Chris Stearns is like saying sounds to me like World War Three, which yeah that is the kind of thing that yeah that Tucker Carlson would actually say. Nick and Vara are really great together. I really appreciate that, you know, she does fire back when he, you know, and and the, the lines about, you know, who she became in his absence. And you can really understand, like, you know, it was that thing with going away was what I expected you to do staying away that hurt you know and the thing with like he has not seen her since the blip that's really messed up you know and 
yeah, I, I really appreciate how flawed this miniseries is allowing characters like Nick Fury to be. You know, it, it used to be, yeah, you know, he'll, he'll, maybe he has some flaws, but he'll do the right thing. You know, he'll, uh, yeah, he'll make sure that the good guys win. And here, like, I, I figured that by the end of the show, he will have won, but, like, it's not really making any excuses for him. And, yeah, I really appreciate, you know, so, so, yeah, Talos goes to the, to the, the museum to, to meet with Gravik. And Gravik says, you know, there's the people who pose for pictures, and then there's the people who are out there killing and dying. And, yeah, it really, I, I love a good villain speech that just really tells you exactly how he, you know, that's, that's his philosophy. And... <laughs> Why don't you just use an empty cup? I little I like a little espresso with my sugar. Okay, is is Talos talking to Gravik or is this the the Edgar bug? And yeah, we see that everyone in the room is a scrawl and they you know they, they change to look like Gravik to like underline, you know, we're we're gonna fight for him. You know, we're on his side you know they they could change they could change just to scroll form but they specifically changed to, to graphic keep my daughter's name out your effing mouth and you know he stabs him as one of those things where it's like okay is scroll skin just scroll skin and flesh just much much more like much easier to, to cut through than human because he's using like the, the knife of a you know the the table of, of a coffee shop so but yeah he manages to to you know stab the hand you smock f and we see him heal with extremis so he has already gone through you know it's possible he already has all four of the the powers, you know, I, I don't think I called it out in the last episode, but, you know, the, the four DNA profiles that we saw on the, that, that Gaia found on the computer, they actually, you know, they, they make up the powers of the Super Scroll, which, for those who might not know, are the powers of the Fantastic Four. And... <laughs> I really appreciate, you know, Nick Fury actually calls out, you know, you're really going to eat that dog food because it's like, come on, man, that's just, I've had, I've been to, to, to England, you know, the, you, you really have to tick someone off to get served slop like that. Like an English breakfast is delicious. So just, yeah, <laughs> but, but that's, I mean, it's a, it's like a, it's cause it's a, bad pub or something I'm, I'm thinking but just yeah and you know Talos manages to get Nick Fury to say help me Talos please help me Talos I am useless without you which you know do not love seeing a black man you know pulled down like that but you know on the other hand like overall Nick Fury does have a better situation on on earth than Talos does so I guess I can and yeah I mean he does make a really good point the way you talked to me yesterday and now you just come in asking for help so just, yeah and yeah so Nick calls Sonia and you know just epic you know picks up the phone Whoever you are, you shouldn't have this number. Again, like, this show keeps quoting me un unknowingly, I'm sure, but that's that's really cool. That's exactly how I always answer the phone. And, yeah, she figured out about the owl, and now she put, like... 
she put an eye patch over the the eye that he put the the um, little camera thing on and yeah uh, Talos and Gravik talk about dogs and I I mean at this point yeah that has to be a reference to, to Pulp Fiction I wouldn't eat dog either and yeah you know Gravik does make it's yeah, Talos does make a really good point what other you know species you know do, where do you have a relationship where one guy cleans up the other guy's poop and it doesn't make sense to say guy because Nick Fury said it's man you know dogs are man's best friend who are you that you're cleaning up your your best friend's poop you know that's a, that's a yeah and they they discuss the the you know Fury feels that he's been cleaning Talos's poop for 30 years, and Talos points out, you wouldn't be where you are if not for me and my unit, you know, and that is a really good point, like, you know, right now we only really have their word for it, but, like, Nick Fury doesn't really, like, say that's a completely, you've completely mis- you completely misrepresent the the our relationship. I mean, we saw he he really wasn't in that great of a position in the Captain Marvel solo movie. So, yeah, I could see how this was the thing that got, you know, yeah. And Talos poses as Bob, and you know, first they just oh, you know needed a break from the wife, and then you know. Sir, I just left you. Oh, you know, and and shoots him, and the yeah, they they have to. Talos and Nick Fury have to gun down a bunch of people. Now, one might think, wait, why would anyone like if if this guy literally just came from the real Bob, why would and and he's standing in front of someone that he thinks is an imposter, why would he just say, I thought you were still in there? Instead of just pretending that there's nothing, and then, like, we have an imposter, you know. I don't think he knows about scrolls. Imagine if you, like, literally just left a person, and then you saw that same person in front of you. Like, if you don't, if, if you don't live in a world that you know has shape-shifting aliens, would you not, like, be like, what is going on, kind of thing, you know. So, yeah. And, yeah, Talos goes up to, to Bob, and I'm busy beating Bob's ass, Nick. Bob, nobody calls me Nick. <laughs> you know, that was a, a great, you know, and it's it's true, you know, everybody, call, everybody who knows him calls him Fury. So that's, you know, and, and Talos, you know, having known him for 30 years, knows that that's, you know, they, yeah, they probably agreed that that would be, code in case he was ever in trouble because obviously you know Bob was like just tell him that things are going well you know don't reveal anything but yeah and Nick Fury points his gun at Zachary the the teenage son of Bob so that just yeah they really they yeah Nick Fury is doing some extreme things to to get results and yeah I, I really respect that like and and it's not like oh you know the the, the kids really off no, no no like afterwards you know talus is like are you, are you okay like here have, have some water and like you know and the kid is like still really free down he's like are you gonna kill my dad kind of thing you know so this is they're not like doing the thing of oh you know everyone who's our enemy is just awful no 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 that's a kid that's that's crossing a line and nick fury didn't even blink so yeah and let's see yeah so so um let's see the yeah yeah they need the the code word i'm not sure it was really necessary i don't know i guess they're they're worried that there may be some people in the audience right like, are they going to are they going to we got to we got to okay so you know nick fury says why don't you just imitate him 
and you know Talos points out why didn't I think of that oh right because there's a code word and Bob knows it and I don't you know it's like come on we know we know how this is this is you know and just you know Nick Fury it shoots him in the freaking knee like that's intense and he's like I'm gonna give you, you know, a few more seconds, and then I'm gonna aim higher or lower, and just yeah, really, really intense. And and you think, oh, okay, you know, I guess they they get the, they're gonna they're gonna get it. But then like Talos shoots Bob for, you know, using his daughter's name in vain and and you can really understand like it's not a s logical decision it's a very much an emotional decision but you can understand like don't say that it just yeah I'm not gonna repeat what he said I yeah it it's I don't need to dissect we all know why that was completely unacceptable to say but yeah and Talos calls Gaia and says I need the the code word to to abort the thing you know just incredibly tense as we see the the you know the the uh the, the plane getting closer and we have the you know we know that one of the guys who's gonna turn the the key is a scroll the other one is you know a, a human and, and one of gravic scrolls that and the other one is a human and i really love that when it's aborted like the scroll like basically panics and tries to turn the key and and the others stop him. You know that, holy crap! And you can understand why. Like just you know he wasn't aware that it was a trap. But yeah, you know Gaia gets into the the area where they keep people captive. You know which does require her to you know take out the two guards. So. 100% she's blown like she you know it's no wonder she she leaves afterwards there's no way that she could keep her cover anymore and you know she goes through a bunch of his thoughts a lot of thoughts about Zachary so Zachary is the the code word makes a lot of sense and let's yeah and and you know I, I right before the it was revealed I did feel like wait this is too easy it's way too easy for Gaia to get out this is a trap you know but yeah because like there's no guard in the you know there's no guards by the by the fence and this whole thing so just yeah there's no way that you know and and Gravik you know flashes her well he would be if this was a Cars movie and you know the yeah he he points out you know and and she you know the the um, yeah he points out you know I didn't fail which is a great like you know I, I just oh she you know yeah it was it it really was a trap right from the start kind of thing you know and that plane valuable discovering the traitor priceless. And she shoots him. Sure, rather, he shoots her. Wow, wow. Um, yeah. Anyway, but the yeah, it it really was right right from the start. The the this whole thing was a trap because he can do without the plane, but if the traitor keeps costing him missions, you know, just yeah. And Vara goes to the the bank and and opens the the what do you call those the, the little vault thing you know and there's a gun and a file and she calls and yeah it's revealed she works for Gravik and yeah just a really really cool episode um, I appreciate that you know like at first, you know, the first episode and some in the second, Nick was kind of disempowered. Now he's he's like clawing his way back up, but he's fighting dirty, dirtier than we've ever seen uh, any good guy in the like. This is this is the kind of dirty fighting that we we see with like villains, you know. So so yeah, I really appreciate the moral complexity 
kind of thing, you know, and yeah, just really, really excited to see where it goes. I, I will say I really didn't expect them to kill off Gaia. Still does not make it okay that they're basically fridging her. I mean, the the way that this show has been going so far, clearly the the reason that they kill off her character is to motivate Talos, you know, so yeah. I I I like that we've now seen, you know, at the very least Talos uh, at yeah, Ravik has the the extremis powers, you know, which is how he's going to be wielding fire, which is one of the fantastic four abilities. And yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, a lot of great dialogue this episode. Uh, every single time that two characters just sit and talk, like if you actually, if you if you look at it just completely, you know, take a step back and just look at. I mean, a lot of this episode is people talking, but because of the acting, the writing, the editing, it's so compelling. You know. The, the, like, when you think to, to, if you think about some of the other MCU shows, you know, there, there will be more, like, a great, yeah, more action, or maybe the action will at least be much bigger, you know, like, for example, in, um, Cap yeah, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, yes, the show. And uh, just, yeah, you know, it's also, and it's it's very gritty and dark. It's not, you know, there's a lot more, like, cheery stuff on, for example, Miss Marvel. You know, so just, yeah, really, really appreciate the, how, how varied the, the MCU is by now. That you really, like, this is straight up a, a spy story that happens to be set within the MCU, you know, like, there's there's plenty of spy stories where someone like you know we you know we've got double agents we've got you know secrets hidden deep within the bases and like you know massive attacks some carried out some prevented you know so so just yeah it just it happens to have shape shifting aliens and I'm here for it so um, yeah, that's it for this one. Make mine marble.